before you watch this video, pause it and try the problem on your own. Okay, so the diagrams below represent the first three terms of a sequence, term 1, term 2, and term 3. Assuming the pattern continues, which formula determines a sub n, the number of shaded squares in the nth term? So let's break the language down here and talk about the situation because these sequence problems are really, really fun. Um, I really enjoy them. So here we have the first three terms of a sequence. And they use the word term. They also use the word shape sometime and other times step. Um, the idea is that they're defining the shape that comes first as term one, the shape that comes second as term two, the second shape in the sequence, and term three is the third shape in the sequence, and so forth. So here, when they say determines a sub n, they're telling you that a sub n is the number of shaded squares in the nth term. So let's make a little table over here. So a sub n is a way of defining the number of shaded squares in any term. So for example, uh, let's say we look at n for our input. n is the, the number of terms that we're on, the number of term that we're on. So here in term 1, n equals 1. That's our first term. And a sub n would equal the number of shaded boxes. And how many are there? Well, there are 1. Actually, sorry, let me write it this way. a sub 1 would be the number of shaded boxes in the first term. A sub n is the number of shaded boxes on any term in the sequence. Like, what's the formula for any amount of shaded boxes? A sub 1 is the specific amount of shaded boxes that are in the first term, when n equals 1. So notice, you just plug in the value for n into this little subscript right here. So if n is 1, we're looking at a sub 1. And then there are 1, 2, 3, 4, and then another 4, which makes 8, and then another 4, which makes 12 shaded boxes here. So when n is 1, we have 12 right shaded boxes. When n is 2, we're looking at a sub 2, and that equals what? Well, we have, I don't have to recount, I could, but notice we have our former shape kind of enclosed here, and then we add another 4 boxes, right? So there are 4 more than there were before. There are now 16. And then again, we can see that term 2 is kind of embedded inside or inside of term 3. There's, right, there's, this is term 2. This whole thing fits right inside this pink square in term 3. And then we add another 4 shaded squares on the outside here. So when n is 3, we know that a sub 3 is 4 more than 16, or 20. In our table, that would mean when n was 1, 2, and 3, a sub n was 12, 16, and then finally 20. So to create a formula for this, we would we would notice that every time n increases by 1, a sub n goes up by 4. All right, that's a constant rate here. Now, as, assuming this continues, of course, we don't know if term 4 like explodes or becomes tiny or whatever, but assuming this continues, that would be a constant rate of change. right? So here, then, if I clear this little, I don't need the rest of my table here, if I clear this part of the table off, what we can say, then, is that m, which is usually the variable we use for slope, is 4 over 1, or just 4. Okay, so now things get a little bit interesting because we know our slope is 4, but we need to write our formula. Now, I was tempted to write um, the formula as 4n plus 12 because I was thinking, well, we start at 12 and then we add 4 more each time. But really, that doesn't make sense because if you try to apply the formula, let's say, let's say you think a sub n equals 4n plus 12, as I first did. Well, when you plug in uh, 1 here for a sub 1, you get 4 times 1 plus 12, and that's 16. So that's a problem because here in the first step, right, we're getting 16 as the number of shaded squares, but actually we need 12, not 16. So this doesn't help us, right? It's not 4 and plus 12. So how do we find this starting number? What do we do? Well, there's lots of ways to think about it. Uh, you could just lower it a little bit until it works because you can see um, here that 16 is getting us the second step, right? We need the first step, which is a total of 12. So that means we need to lower this number in order from 12 in order to get the first step, not the second. And we need to, it's, it's 4 too high, so we could simply lower it by 4. You could say that a sub n equals 4n plus, not 12, but 8. That's one way to reason through it, right? And here, if you try to plug in 
all the different values. 8 sub 1 equals 4 times 1 plus 8. That's 12. That, so when you plug in 1, you do get the correct number of shaded squares for the first term. If you plug in 2, you get 4 times 2 plus 8, which is 16. Right? That's correct. And then a sub 3, which equals 4 times 3 um, plus 8, which equals 12 plus 8, which equals 20. And that, that gives you the correct outputs, the correct number of shaded sequen, uh, squares. So you can just go back and lower that term. But another way to think about this in general, um, this number is often referred to in linear equations as the y-intercept b. And that is the number, right? Um, well, let's not use this example. That's the wrong number. Let's use this one. This number b is the y-intercept, or starting point. Now, if you think about a y-intercept for a moment on a graph, so we're going to step back a little bit and think about this conceptually. If we draw a line on a graph anywhere, as long as it's not a vertical line, it's got to cross your y-axis, right? As long as it's not going straight up and down or something over here, it's vertical. So this is the this is the y-intercept, and it, there's a point that labels the y-intercept, and that would be zero for x, comma b, some number for the y-intercept. So what does that mean? Well, this is the key to understanding the starting value for me, at least, because I notice that the input is zero or x is zero, and that's when you find your output uh, at the start so to speak, the y value, which is represented by sometimes the letter b. So all of this is saying that in order to establish the start of your function, right, you want to set your input x to 0. Now what is the input here, right? Well the input here in this case is the term number that we're on. So to understand what this number should be and why it should be 8, we should go back to the start point and start in this context is considered when the input x is zero. In other words, we need to figure out what term zero looks like, right? What would it look like if we went back a step, if we followed this pattern? Well, notice that we went from term three to term two, we lost four shaded squares around the side. And we also noticed that term two is kind of embedded here in term three, and term one is embedded in term two. So there's two ways to think about going backwards. Either way, term zero is going to be this right here, right? Term zero is embedded inside, inside term one in this shade right in the shade in the shaded region right here, um, and or you could just count and take off four boxes from the edges. Either way, um, term zero would have just right this area right here, and that's eight shaded squares. So that means that you start at eight and you add four more shaded shaded squares per term, and that gives you the total shaded squares uh, at any step. So here our answer would be choice two. All right, hope that helped.